Hi, my name is Jim White, and I'm the host today for OurVentura.com, and I'm here today with Nancy O'Connor from the Parks and Recreation Department. Nancy, how are you doing today? Pretty darn good. All right. So how long have you been the Parks Manager for the City of Ventura? Uh, just a little over a year now. Just like a year and a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, happy anniversary. Well, thank you. What brought you to Ventura? Well, your joke, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it, the car, but okay. um, no, actually uh, the, the chance to get back into a park system that was uh, by the ocean. I started my park career out mm -hmm. on the East Coast on the ocean and moved inland for a while and decided, you know, I kind of like those ocean breezes and things like that. So yeah. I really wanted to get back to it and had the opportunity to apply for this job and, and was lucky enough to be chosen. Well, that's great. Well, we we really enjoy all the stuff you're doing, and let's you know tell me today what kind of things are going on in the Parks Commission. Well, um, let me talk uh, a little bit about some of the projects that we're, that we're working on that that I, I was given right when I first got here. Uh, the first one is let's talk about Cemetery Park. Uh, okay. As you know, it's a it's a controversial subject that's been languishing out there for, for years, and uh, it was one of the first things I was given. And what we were able to do was uh, form a committee that has a number of different members on the committee from the different commissions, plus a, a, a member from the public that uh, has a lot of history of Cemetery Park. And um, she has enabled us to uh, know what the past brought so that it can help mm -hmm. guide us for the future. And one, uh, the committee has gotten down to the, to the point where now we're figuring out the final details. We're going to uh, redo the, the entrance that's on Poli. Uh, we're going to uh, take out some of the overgrown uh, junipers that are there. We're going to fix the rock wall. We're going to put up a really, um, um, I don't want to say as much interesting as much as, as, as a meaningful memorial that's going to honor everybody that, that's buried at Cemetery Park. And then we're also going to put um, a uh, some interpretive signs up on uh, one section of the park that's going to tell the history of the park. Oh, um, yeah. We're hoping, hoping to see uh, some of that work commence uh, sometime in 2012. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. That is. <clears throat> well, besides Cemetery Park, there's other parks in the community. How many parks do we have in we the have city? We have 37 parks. Wow. That's I amazing. Know. Who, who, who would have thought that there's that many? And, and um, as, I've, I, as, as I've been here, one of the things that I think is so interesting is that we have a variety of parks that are small mm -hmm. and all the way up to very, very large that offer a variety of amenities for people to enjoy in a number of different ways. There's, there's uh, um, areas that for your kids, there's tennis, there's mm -hmm. areas for your dogs, there's areas just to, to relax and, and just passively enjoy the turf and, and the trees and the plants and everything in our parks. Well, that's great. Well, one of the things that you hear about is, is we can build parks, but how do we keep them going? Right. How do we get the community involved in, in keeping our parks going? Well, uh, I think one of the things that we have to realize in this time of budget cuts, and, and again, not just budget cuts in the city, but throughout the state and, you know, and, and federal, is that we have to, to uh, take a, a holistic approach when we go to a park, and we have to find ways that we can reduce the level of maintenance that's mm. there for our, when our regular staff shows up. And anybody that, that hikes or anybody that camps usually knows the term pack in, pack out, mm -hmm. which usually means uh, what you bring in, you would end up bringing out, including your own trash. And we're asking p residents to try to embrace that philosophy, is when they go into a park, if they could remove their own trash and maybe another piece of trash as well, it would be really helpful. It's the same way that we're asking people to uh, to pick up after their pet. If they remove their own pet's uh, waste and, and maybe somebody else that didn't, if they could get that waste as well, the parks are going to be that much better for anybody who else that can use them. And that's something that's really important to us is that let's make sure that the parks are beautiful for the next person to use anytime, any day, whenever you use them. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. I noticed the, out at the community park there's a couple of things going on here. What's going on with the uh with the walking trail, it looks like. Well, the walking trail, uh, one of the, the uh, Parks and Recreation Commissioners, who will go unnamed, uh, uh, asked us last, uh, in 2011, what, what we could do to potentially add some sort of a, a running surface out there. And mm -hmm. of course, there's no money. And one of the things that we looked at was, could we add some wood chips to the inside of the concrete walking path? Mm -hmm. 
we generate our own wood chips with the, the trees that we chip, and we have a, an, uh, a company that works for us, West Coast Arborist, and they also do a lot of our contract tree maintenance, and we asked them if we could get their wood chips as well. And so what we've done is we've deposited the chips out there in, in, in piles, so when people see the piles up there, they, mm -hmm. they kind of wonder what's going on. And we've gotten volunteer groups to go out there and help spread these chips, so we've got approximately a six-foot wide wood chip running path right next to the walking path and we're hoping that the runners can take advantage of it because anybody that runs knows that running on concrete is, is hard on your body after a while and so this will offer a little bit of uh, of relief so that the runners can take advantage of the, the soft chips for a while when they make that turn uh, wow. through the community park. And it really looks nice too. I think it does yeah. as well and the other thing that's exciting that's going on out there is the BMX track. Okay. Uh, we had a group that came to in front of Parks and Recreation Commission in um, um, the spring of 2011 and their proposal was to uh, partner with the city and use city land to build mm -hmm. a BMX track. They didn't want any money from the city and they also offered to do revenue sharing. When we looked at the uh, proposal, we thought, you know, this is a, an opportunity to provide an amenity that we don't have already. Mm -hmm. And so we thought this would be a, a, a good chance to see if we could do something that hadn't been done before. And Community Park certainly has the space. It's a temporary use. Uh, they, they know at any time if something mm -hmm. goes wrong that they could be asked to leave. And um, we hope to see uh, that BMX track up sometime in 2012. Wow. That's amazing. It is. It's well, really exciting. You know, I, I'm thinking of the community, community park in the East End. Uh, there's lots of pools out there. It starts thinking about water conservation. How do we? What's what's the energy of the of the commission? What's the energy of the city for water conservation? Well, um, one of the things that I've been focusing on, and in, in, in for people that live in Ventura, they know that we have a new a new water district, or mm -hmm. it's uh, 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 a new uh, general manager for our wa water district. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really focusing on water conservation, not only with residents and just their normal use in, in their homes, but water conservation in our parks and in our medians and things like that. And the direction that we're going to be going in the next few years until we can get caught up is that we are reducing our water use. Uh, this year we're going to try to reduce our water use by 15% and then next year up to 25% so that we can make an appreciable difference in mm. the amount of water that we use. The second thing that we're really focusing, focusing on is we're looking at reductions in non-essential turf. And what I mean by that is in areas that n might have to be hand mowed or they have to have a lot of special care that's just regular turf because you can't really recreate on, you know, say a, a piece of turf that's 10 by 10 yeah. that was put in at a time when grass, you know, there was a lot of other reasons for grass, but now it becomes something that we look at and we say, wow, that uses a lot of water and you can't really do anything with it. So we're going to, going to be looking at reducing the turf and then putting in drought tolerant plants and boulders and DG and, you know, make some interesting things, but at the same time, show the residents where we're going for uh, our, our future direction. Oh wow, that's that's amazing. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, something that's kind of been going on for a while off and on is the West Side Park area. Uh, I know a lot of the people out there are talking about getting parks out there, improving the parks out there. What's the latest from the city? Well, uh, recently the city council uh, passed a policy direction mm -hmm. that was uh, put forward by the Parks and Recreation Commission to study the, the availability of buying uh, property on the west side and to use whatever uh, financial pots of money that the city council deemed appropriate. Uh, one of the things that uh, that resonated loud and clear at the council meeting was that if possible we did not want to touch the money that has been set aside for the west side pool. So a committee is being formed uh, to find out can we purchase the land, um, is the land viable for a park, uh, what kind of fundraising can we do mm -hmm. to not only per potentially purchase the land if, if, if the city is short of money, but what can, we, what can we find for money to build the park and to also maintain the park? That's where a lot of people forget that there is a significant sum of money. 
Equipment costs a lot of money. Repairs cost a lot of mm -hmm. money. Upkeep costs a lot of money. And one of the things that one of the council members said uh, at the recent council meeting is that we don't want to ensure that whatever we build, we don't saddle future generations with something that they can't sustain. And that, that's definitely the direction that we want to go in our department, too. We want to make sure that whatever we put there, we can sustain in the future. Yeah. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of work to be done, not only after you build the park, but keeping it going. That's right. And how can the community get involved with that? Well, one of the things is that we have a pretty robust volunteer mm -hmm. program um, in the city, in the, in the Parks and Recreation Department and Community Partnerships. And any time that anybody thinks that uh, their, their contribution would be insignificant, that, that, that's certainly thinking that we want to try to change. Sometimes even just an hour a month could help us. If, if people, mm -hmm. when they, even when they just go to the park and they enjoy the park, if they could just pick up some trash, if they could pick up pet waste, if they could report to us if they see a leak or, or if they see somebody abusing a piece of equipment or something like that, that would be such a help for us because our, our budgets and our staff have been cut so drastically that we can't always see everything. And sometimes mm -hmm. to have the community help us, we can get ahead of the problem or at least stay on top of the problem. So those are the things that we'd really like to see our residents help us with. Yeah. Well, Nancy, I really appreciate your time being here today. We're almost out of time right now, but is there anything you can tell the community about the Parks and Recreation Commission or the Parks and Recreation Department that uh, is exciting, exciting and, and, and something that's coming up real, real, real quickly and that you want to uh, expound on it a little bit for us. Well, I think you hit just exactly on it, is that we have a commission, we have a, a, a very active Parks and Recreation Commission, mm -hmm. and we have a very active Parks and Recreation and Community Partnerships Department that is, is out there every day trying to get programs for our kids, for our, all ages of our residents, and to keep our parks looking mm -hmm. as, as, as best that they can with you know the limited funds that we have. But we just ask people to get involved. We ask them to you know call our department, find out what they could do to help, um, you know report problems that they see, things like that be involved in the commission, come to the commission meetings and see the things that we're working on, those type of things. I think the more you can get involved with your community, the more that you'll find that your community actually is involved with you and you know it, it's definitely a, a circle that goes full, full way around. And there's, there's a website that everybody can go to for the city of Ventura. What's the name of the website? It's, uh, as we know, we're having a little problems with our websites. It's cityofventura.net. And if you okay. click on the Parks Department, um, you'll see all the, the wonderful things that we have, not, you know, not only just our parks, but all of our recreation programs as, as well. And there's, there's places you can volunteer? Yeah, there is. And you can do it right from the comfort of your home. You can't volunteer from your home, but you can click on the volunteer button and you can fill everything out. And there's an enormous amount of, of variety in the, uh, the things that you can volunteer uh -huh. with. Well, I really appreciate it. Again, appreciate your time here, Nancy. Uh, it sounds to me like the Parks Commission, as well as the Parks and Recreation Department, has a lot of things going on for the city. They do. And the only way to find out about it is to go online and see what's going on. And of course, all the different things that come through the mail about different, thing, different activities and things like that, go out and visit a park. Please. See what's going on in the 37 different parks? 37 in the different parks, yep. And uh, how different they are. So, yes. again, I appreciate your time. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for being here for ourventura.com and for me, Jim White. And thank you again, Nancy, for being here and talking about the Community Parks and Recreation Department. <laughs>